Hey guys, welcome back. Sorry I've been a bit quiet on the YouTube front recently. Just been hanging out with this little dude. He's the coolest little bloke. We are so stoked with um, the pleasure of raising this little chap. Finn is his name. Um, he may be making a feature in a few of uh, the up and coming videos. So stay tuned, especially if you're into babies. Um, anyway, today we're gonna be looking at Scott Pape's money movement, okay? We're gonna be looking over the five different things that he's looking to try and do and implement and bring into the schooling in Australia. Um, but this is an email he sent out only a few days ago and he's currently got a petition running where he's trying to get 150,000 signatures together to change the schooling in Australia. Um, this is something that I'm definitely taking interest in, especially now that I've recently become a father, but um, even prior to that as well, it was something I always thought that was lacking in the schooling, both not only here in Australia and New Zealand, but more across the globe, really. Um, so I think it's pretty amazing what Scott Pape's doing uh, currently at the moment with his new money movement that he's got going on here in Australia. Um, so without that said, let's jump in and have a quick look over what he's actually got planned for his up and coming money movement. Guys, I'm over on my email account here and every Monday I get an email from Scott Pape. I've signed up to his weekly emails. I was part of his blueprint a number of years ago, um, but he recently closed that down last year, unfortunately, which is good. It's forced me out to uh, do a lot more research um, and have a lot more of a deeper understanding on what I'm actually investing in, not just going off his and Mike Kemp's recommendations. Anyway, with that said, so we sent out this email on Monday. If you only open up one email, please make it this one. I know it's a very clickbaity title, um, but generally, you know, he doesn't send out these sort of clickbaity titles. Um, and, it, and to be honest, Scott Pape's emails are the only emails that I religiously read every week. I mean, I do read other emails, obviously, but, um, you know, when you sign up to certain things online, you, you get all this, oh, yeah, I'll sign up to this, I'll read that, and you read it a couple of times, and, and you never read the ongoing emails. Scott Pape's like, definitely not like that. I read his emails religiously every week. Um, next, we're going to jump in and have a quick look over his website. If you're not currently subscribed to his email list, highly recommend it. Each week, he just sends out an email, you know, usually has two to three questions, Q&A from the, um, his email list. You know, people send in their dramas or problems that, that he has, and he sort of writes his responses to them. And they're all super easy to read. Um, it's just very insightful stuff shares his thoughts for what's happening that week, whatever may be happening in the US or Australia or what he's sort of seeing out there in the financial markets. So anyway, that's enough of a plug from him. Um, let's jump over quickly to his website. After this, we're going to be looking at his actual petition to see what he's actually trying to petition forwards towards the different state governments here in Australia. So this is his website. So at the top of the list here, it says, join over 400,000 Aussies who read my Monday newsletter. So I don't know if all 400,000 open it up, but I know personally I do. Um, and I imagine a lot of people would sign up to it. A little spiel on his book here. His books are fantastic. I've been working my way through this one again. I've been reading it to Finn. Um, not like it's a bit, bit above his pay grade, but uh, it's good for me to refresh my um, knowledge on his books. They're awesome books. Highly recommend them. I've done another video on it if you want, if you want to check that out. Anyway, I'm not going to go over this too much. Just a basic sort of overview of his website here. I'll leave a link in the description if you guys wanted to check that out. Anyway, let's jump into this petition that he's got running. So, and he's been emailing about this over the number of years. There's something he's, that he's been working on, really trying to kick the banks out of the schools, in particular Commonwealth Bank. He has a real hate for uh, Commonwealth Bank in the schools, um, sort of, you know, priming kids up for grooming kids essentially to, you know, as soon as they turn 18 years of age, sign them up for a credit card, give them a five grand limit. And, you know, it, they, they could be paying that off for the next five, 10 years. You know, all, all of a sudden they've got, you know, access to five, ten grand, where, where they may not, you know, fully understand the repercussions of how much the interest they'll be paying and that sort of thing. So this is something that Scott Pape is really trying to beat out of the school system. And this is what his um, big petition here is about. I'm not going to read everything here, but as you can see, so he's aiming for 150,000 um, people to sign this petition. Look, I'm not trying to say that you should sign this or not, but um, if you're definitely interested and you want to see change within the schooling system here in Australia, then I highly recommend you go over and sign it. It doesn't cost you a cent. Um, we're going to touch on something at the end there just around that, but it's free to sign up. You know, it takes you a couple of minutes, and I think it would help old Scott Pape out a lot. This is something he's very passionate about, and he's the right man for the job, I feel, for pushing um, on the different sort of state governments to uh, make some change there. Um, and then just quickly here, so says, why didn't I get taught this stuff at school? It's, I mean, I grew up in New Zealand. And I know we didn't touch on any of this at school. I'm not too sure what it's like in Australia at the moment, but um, from what Scott Pape says, it sounds like it's pretty poor. And I imagine it is like New Zealand. I didn't learn anything about finance. Um, I did have an interest in it, especially when I got a bit older, sort of around that sort of maybe 14, 15 years of age. 
picked up Rich Dad Poor Dad and picked up a few other books and started getting a bit of an interest from it, but it's things that I've just learned along the way, not through anything that I learned uh, through the schooling system. Anyway, let's keep moving down here. Um, so the money movement manifesto. Um, our kids will be tested on money skills every single day of their lives, yet most of us had to learn these skills the hard way because we were never taught them in school. Um, so we need to do more, obviously. Here are the five core cool aims of the money movement. He also has a show running on Foxtel at the moment. I haven't actually watched the show. Um, drop it in the comments below if you guys have actually seen the show because I'd be curious to hear what you guys' thoughts on it. I'm trying to get it taped at the moment to um, get on and have a bit of a watch because I'm pretty keen just to have a bit of a watch, see what it's all about. Anyway, so his first um, one off the rank here is implement a practical four to six week money challenge every year. So he's aiming this off an old reading challenge that they must have had. I'm not too familiar with this reading challenge actually, but it sounds like a great reading challenge as well. Um, so he's calling that all state governments get behind a money challenge. It's not just another requirement on already overcrowded curriculum, but it's something exciting that schools should take up because it's important. It is true, like, you know, especially when you're now using money every day, why is it not something they sort of touch on at school? Um, so number two here is show the primary primary school is the power of working, saving, spending, and giving. Okay, this is also something that he talks a lot about in his um, Barefoot for Families book, touches on, and also the Barefoot Investor as well. Sort of this, the three different baskets and and then jam jars he calls them in the Barefoot for Families, um, three different buckets. Sorry, in in the Barefoot Investor. So you know here it says here it gets kids excited and amazed at what they can happen. During a pilot money challenge at school in Hervey Bay, one of the poorer regions in the nation, the six-year-olds came up with the idea of using their class give money to feed homeless people in their community. So this is fantastic. Like this is such a great cause. I feel here, um, you know. So it's not just you know, you know, making kids like oh, I've got to save all my money. Like he has these different sort of the jars that he sets out. You know, one give jar, one save jar, and one splurge jar, which spend on lollies or whatever it may be. So very, very cool system. Uh, I feel. Um, then number three, you know, show the high schoolers how to get a job and set up their savings buckets. Also in the book there, I know I keep flapping on about this book, but he has like a whole run sheet of a basic sort of resume and a cover letter that your child can take to your their first employer, whether it's at Macca's or somewhere at the local shop in town or something. Um, it, basically coming in with a nice cover letter and he's almost written a copy paste. You can just fill in a couple of details there. And I you know if I was an employer and I got a kid that came in with this, I know I'd be pretty impressed and I'd be taking them on. But that's just me. Um, so yeah, number three here, you remember being a teenager in class thinking, how will I ever use this in the real world? <laughs> this was me a lot, especially when it comes to math. I was struggling with uh, trigonometry. I was never very good at trig or even algebra for that. And I was like, when am I ever going to use this? And that was something that I used to think about at school. Drop in the comments if you guys had the same sort of thoughts. Like I was like, and I, to be honest, I have never used algebra or trig since leaving school, but maybe people do. Um, I've never had to use it in my day-to-day -day life, but you know something as simple as signing up to uh, for getting a mortgage or paying your taxes, all these sort of things that we do have to do every day, something they never touch on. So they're definitely getting a change would be a positive, I feel. So anyway, talks about these saving buckets here. Um, number four is commit to professional development, financial education for teachers. This is fantastic as well. If you can get the teachers involved, you know, then they can start teaching their kids obviously more bit about money so teachers aren't in the job just for the money it's a vocation still it's hard to stand up in front of a crowd of year nines and talk about the dangers of credit cards when you have a credit card debt yourself bottom line to raise financial fit kids we need financially fit teachers so fantastic yeah i knew he uh, maybe it was about six months back he was looking for anyone that was a school teacher in his email list there to to send an email and try and try out one of these pilot programs um and then i lastly on the list here we've got number five kick the banks out of the schools Having banks teach our kids about money is like having Ronald McDonald teach them about nutrition. Our children's financial education is too important to outsource. The government financial regulator, ASIC, is independent of commercial interests and should be one to deliver the program. I highly agree. I think that is something bang on. They definitely get the banks out of the schools. They're essentially grooming the kids. You know, they try and sign them up with a cool kids account or something that gives them bugger all interest, especially in the current interest environment. Um, and then later on, they'll be hammering them with sign up to credit cards and all this sort of stuff, which could financially cripple someone for maybe five to 10 years if they don't fully understand um, the implications of the credit card that they may be signing up for. Um, so this is something that he tru truly believes in. And um, that's why I've given a bit of a plug here right on the channel, because I, I truly believe in it as well. It's something I've sort of not only just taken on now because we have a child, but it's something that I've 
been quite passionate about myself over the years and always sort of questioned, I've ever bumped into teachers, I've got a few friends and family that are teachers and I always ask them about it and they agree. Um, so yeah, it's definitely something that needs to change, I feel. Um, so this is what Scott Pape says here, he wants every Aussie kid to learn this. If you do, then he invites you to join him and sign the petition. Like I said, I'm not trying to sway you anyway, you should sign this or you shouldn't sign this. I mean, you, you do you, I'm just trying to sort of bring it to everyone's attention, maybe you haven't heard of this petition, it's only just come out the last couple of days. But like I said, he's trying to aim for that 150,000 um, people to sign it, which I think he will smash it. Like he's only been out a few days and he's already close to that 100,000. So what do you reckon? Should we give him a crack and get him try and get him up to that 150,000 mark? Um, and also it says down here, um, you know, a couple of PS and PPS. For the record, I'm committed to working with any government who agrees to take this on. And he's offering his time absolutely for free, which is also another quite a noble thing for Scott Pape to say, I still. And also at the bottom here, it says PPS, I only need your signature, not your money. So if, I'm going to leave a link to this in the description below. But as you're going through and signing the petition, they ask for, oh, you know, I want to chip in a couple of bucks. And even that, I was like, well, what's this about? Now, I didn't actually chip in any dollars, but they say it pushes it out a bit further and gets a bit more awareness around it. But um, you definitely don't have to. I, I didn't chip in any extra money on there. Um, but then like it says here, he only needs your signature, not your money. Change.org, which is the website he's listed this petition through may ask for more money to promote the permission, but that is not needed, just say no. And that's exactly what I did there. And then I didn't actually read all this before I went through because I was so quick to sign the petition. Um, and it was only later when I went through to do this video that I actually saw that. But um, yeah, definitely don't have to pay any money there or anything, it's totally free. And it will only take you a couple of minutes. And then yeah, feel free to share with your friends if you want. Um, if you think they might be interested in this, I've got young kids going through school or anything like that. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna wrap that one up there. If you've got any questions or anything I've covered up on there, drop it in the comments below and I'll do my best to help you. All right guys, hope you got some value there. Just going over the petition and um, all the five different things that Scott Bates trying to implement into the schooling system here in Australia. Um, like I said earlier, if by all means, you don't have to sign a petition at all. I'm not trying to force your hand or anything there, but I definitely think it's a good thing that you should um, definitely consider looking at doing, especially if you want to see change in the um, Australian schooling system when it comes to financial education. Um, just the basics I think is, would be so important. I think the country would be a lot better off if we just could get a basic understanding um, of financial education in the schooling here in Australia. Um, with that said, we're about to head off down the beach. If you did get some value from today's video, make sure you hit that like button and also hit subscribe if you want to see future videos like this. Um, with that said, we're about to shoot off down the beach. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Cheers, team.